Hello everyone, Rich here with another retro video. I'm using Windows NT, Workstation 4.0 for this one. I could have used Windows 98 or Windows 2000 or Windows XP, but I decided to use NT just because. The point of this video is not NT though, the point of this video is Outlook Express 6. This is old. Uh, let's see, this is version 6.00, 2800.11.06. Does it give me the release date? I don't think so. But I know uh, the release date, I believe, for 6 was... I want to say 2001. I know it came bundled with XP. That I do know. Because um, when you install XP, even with no service packs, it does have OE6 in it. So I believe uh, it was an 01 release. So why am I showing this? Well, because... First of all, it's old. And second of all, for those of you that are doing um, vintage computers that cannot access your email through a browser, probably due to browser incompatibility with your webmail, you'll have to use a client. And being that you probably don't want to pay for a client, <laughs> you'll use Outlook Express 6. I mean, yes, you could use Mozilla Thunderbird. But if you're using something really old, like Windows NT, that does not run. Mozilla Thunderbird, at least not to my knowledge. Um, Thunderbird, I believe, requires at least Windows 2000 in order to run. Now, if you have a copy of uh, Office 2000, for example, I do have Microsoft Outlook 2000 in here, but chances are you don't have that, so you'll have to deal with this. Now, let me reset um, this to how it normally looks. Yeah, it looks like this normally. Okay, so Outlook Express 6. Uh, the first thing I'm going to point out here are the limitations before actually setting up an account. Now, I mentioned this in my last video with Windows Live Mail where the store folder is, and this actually stems all the way back to Outlook Express, um, I want to say OE4 or even 5, possibly even back to Microsoft Mail and News, which was the precursor to Outlook Express. Um, it was Tools, Options, Maintenance, Tab, Store Folder, and it gives this big long folder. Now if you thought the folder was deep in Windows Live Mail 2011, it's even deeper in Outlook, excuse me, Outlook Express. So I'm going to show you what's in there. Let me just copy this address here. Cancel, cancel. Launch a Windows Explorer. Okay. Now, contrary to Windows Live Mail 2011, which uses individual EMLs to store all its emails, Outlook Express uses proprietary DBX files. As you can see here, uh, each folder is a DBX. So, for example, there's Inbox, and there's an Inbox DBX. If I create more folders, you will see the DBXs appear. These are awful to deal with because of, of two reasons. One, they only work in Outlook Express. They don't work anywhere else. Uh, and they and the biggest problem is that they have a two gigabyte file limit, file size limit, I should say. This can be a problem because what happens is that, let's just say, for example, in the inbox, I have the standard uh, welcome wagon email here from OE6 that I have a whole bunch of mail in here that, uh, and let's just say I receive a whole bunch of attachments, and then over time it grows to a size over 2 gigabyte in size. Well, what happens at that point? What happens is that the mail database, the DBX, would go corrupt, and you can't fix it. <laughs> so therefore, all your mail in that inbox is gone, and uh, or I should say not gone, but inaccessible at that point. And uh, are there repair tools for DBX files? There are. I haven't seen a single one that's free. So you'd have to pay for it. And there's no guarantee it would even work. So if you do happen to use this client, it is very important to know <laughs> not to have a lot of mail in any single folder or to periodically go into the store folder and do a view details so you can actually see. See, this is 137K, so it's nowhere near 2 gigabyte, obviously. But you do have to periodically check the size because I don't believe that there is a way. Well, let me try properties here. Will it actually? No, it doesn't tell me the size. 
I could have sworn there was a way to do that in OE. I guess not. So you have to check here. And if you're creeping up towards 2 gigabyte, which you can get to faster than you think, you got it, it's a very simple fix. You just take mail out of there and you move it into another folder. So I would create a new folder called like archive and take mail and I'll just drag this over here and now it's in here. And you'll notice when I did that, it created a DBX called archive because as I said a moment ago, each folder is a DBX file or a database. So that is the biggest drawback. Now the second biggest drawback to Outlook Express, there is no spam control, zero. No junk button anywhere, no spam control, no Bayesian filters, none of that does not exist in this client without using third-party utilities. Now there are third-party utilities such as, I believe one is called Spambase, uh, S-P-A-M-B-A-Y-E-S. -E you can Google that and I believe they have a plugin that will integrate into Outlook Express. So there is third-party utility, but the point is, is that on its own, nothing. So that's the second biggest drawback. And the third biggest drawback I think this is the final one I can really think of here, is that in the options area under read, <clears throat> you want to have the box read all messages in plain text checked. You have to have this checked, and I'll tell you why. It's more, like, more than likely true that in whatever email account you set up in Outlook Express, you do periodically receive spam. We all receive spam it, in email. It happens, right? Well, Outlook Express uses Internet Explorer 6 in order to render emails, which is, by the way, the reason that you can't use Outlook Express in Vista or Windows 7, because that comes with IE 8 by default. And uh, since Outlook Express needs IE 6, it can't run in Vista or 7. Um, that's why Windows Live Mail, excuse me, there was Windows Mail, that was the next version technically of Outlook, Outlook Express and Vista, and then that in turn turned into Windows Live Mail, which is what you have now, which is essentially another Outlook Express. If you're looking at, if you use Windows Live Mail and you're looking at this saying, man, this looks really familiar, <laughs> it's because of uh, Windows Live Mail, which is very similar. Anyway, the point is you want to have read all messages in plain text because there is a lot of spam that will exploit Internet Explorer 6, whether you use the browser or not. And uh, it can launch malware and spyware and launch malicious scripts and a whole bunch of other crap that you don't need, right? Right. You can pretty much thwart all that stuff just by purposely reading your mail in plain text. So good thing to know. So let's set up an account here and see what happens. Now the cool thing is that even as old as this mail client is, it will still support modern mail accounts. Gmail, for example, requires SSL connectivity uh, for mail service. Outlook Express 6 will support that, no problem. I'm going to use an AOL mail account here um, and purposely choose SSL on the mail server connectivity so you can see what happens. So tools, accounts, uh, it's on all by default. Go to mail, add mail. Put in my name, email address. Choose IMAP server. Oh, I should note. Now, HTTP is for Hotmail. Hotmail does not work in Outlook Express. It used to many moons ago. Not anymore, so don't try it. It'll fail. I mean, you can, I, okay, you can try it if you want. It's not going to work. Just telling you up front. Okay, so incoming mail server, outgoing mail server. Next, the account name and the password. And finish. But we're not done yet, so I will highlight this and go to properties, rename the mail account to the actual email address. It put names at the mail server for whatever reason, which is dumb, but that's what it does. Okay, under servers, you should have to do the outgoing mail server authentication, which should be the exact same username and password to log into the mail account. Again, many moons ago, it used to be that outgoing mail servers were usually different server addresses. Well, they still are different server addresses, but they re required a separate username and password. That's usually 
not the case anymore. As a matter of fact, it's pretty much never the case where it's a separate username and password. But that's where it is. So connection, we don't have to worry about that. Security, there is things for certificates you probably don't have one. I don't know anyone that does, so you can skip this part. Under advanced, this is where you set up the SSL connectivity, so check, check. On the uh, incoming, it sets it to 993. On the outgoing, you'll have to change this. It's probably 465. The other thing I would do is I would set the server timeout to two minutes. The reason you do this is because IMAP can tend to choke at times, and it can sometimes last beyond a minute. If it does, especially if you're sending an email, that can be bad because uh, the transfer can botch. If you set it to two minutes, however, you should be okay. Under the IMAP tab, um, you'll probably only need to change the sent items path to sent. Now in Gmail, uh, it's kind of weird because I think you have to, in the root folder path, put bracket Gmail end bracket for the root folder path. I'm pretty sure that's required. If anyone wants to make a comment on that, uh, confirming whether that's true or not, please do so. But anyway, um, you do have to change sent items to sent. Drafts you can leave as is and hit apply and then OK and then close. It's going to ask for uh, if you want to download the folder list. Yes. And you've got your folder list. And then you hit OK. And I will check the saved folder because I know I have mail in there. All right. So I got some mail. And that's pretty much that. The last thing, two last things I will... Uh, no, three last things I'll mention, actually. The first thing is that these buttons are fugly, so, but we can change that. I can right-click in a blank area, customize, selective text on right, and change to small icons and close. That looks a lot nicer. And it does follow suit when you go to create a new email which, or uh, any other window in Outlook Express, which is Nifty. Uh, let's see, that was the first thing I wanted to show. The next thing is the fonts. Um, Outlook Express and even up to Windows Live Mail today has always done fonts wrong. It's always, it never has done it right, but you can get it to sort of look right. Assuming you do read all mail in plain text, which you should, I would do this. Go to Tools, Options, first go to Read, Fonts, change the proportional to Courier new. Actually, I should change it to Lucida Console. Yeah, it looks better. Lucida Console, Lucida Console, font size smaller. OK. And then in Compose for mail, same thing. Lucida Console uh, 10 should do it. And for news, you, you don't have to do this one you, because it's very unlikely. You're using it as a news reader, and then the mail looks a little better. And when you compose, it will be the same font. So that's that. And the last thing I will mention is that um, even though you really can't work with DBX files, you can uh, drag and drop emails to and from server to local or even outside of the client to back up mail if you want to. It's manual, but it works. And what I could do here is that I can take a mail and I can just drag it outside and it actually creates a copy of that email and then I can take it and drag it into here and then create a copy. And it's that simple. I don't know if I can mass select emails or not. Well, let me try this. I will try three emails. Let's see if it works. Yes to all. Oh, it did. So that means I can take these three and drag them in here. And it worked. Cool. You can do that in Windows Live Mail too, by the way. So that's that. Outlook Express, use it if you have to. I wouldn't recommend it. But if you have no other choice, now you know how to work with it.